Praise the Lord. In the book of Galatians chapter 2, beginning in verse 9 that is written, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go into the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Why did James, Cephas, or Peter, and John go to the circumcision? And why did Paul and Barnabas go into the heathen? For Jesus Christ says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Christians preach the gospel. And those that do not preach the gospel directly, they help the preaching of the gospel. For our fellowship as Christians is in the preaching of the gospel. As it is written in the third epistle of the Apostle John. In third John. Chapter verse 5, it is written, Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey to godly sword, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore are to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Even those that did not directly preach the gospel, they were fellow helpers to the truth and blessing those who did preach the gospel. For once again, in Mark chapter 15, verse 16, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Christians, we fellowship in the preaching of the gospel. As it is written in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 9, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go into the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. They gave each other the right hands of fellowship as they both both sides, Cephas, James, and John, and Paul and Barnabas went forth to preach the gospel. One group, James, Cephas, and John went to the circumcision, and the other group, Paul and Barnabas, went to the uncircumcision, to the heathen, but they both went forth to preach the gospel. For Jesus Christ says once again, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They gave each other the right hands of fellowship in the preaching of the gospel. Our fellowship as Christians is in the preaching of the gospel. Not only so did they fellowship and give each other the right hands of fellowship, to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature, Paul and Barnabas to the heathen, and James, Cephas, and John to the circumcision, verse 10, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Not only do we Christian fellowship in the preaching of the gospel, not only do we give each other the right hands of fellowship, in the preaching of the gospel, we also remember the poor. The poor are important to the Lord as much as the lost is. The lost is important to the Lord, for the Bible says, and God would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is God's will for each and every person to be saved. Therefore, the Lord cares for the lost. And not only does the Lord care for the lost, He also cares for the poor. The Lord cares so much so for the poor that it will determine and how you treat your poor where 
you'll spend eternity when you die if you are a professing Christian. For in Matthew chapter 5, the Lord Jesus Christ says, in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 25, the Lord Jesus Christ says, in verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall say to the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for the for you from the foundation of the world. For you prayed this prayer. No, the Lord does not say so. Come, ye blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, because you answered an altar call. No, the Lord does not say so. Come, ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world because you went to church every Sunday or you professed Jesus as Lord. No, he does not say so. He says, Come ye, blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? When saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you have done unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. The Lord cares so much so for the poor, as much as he cares for the loss, and commends us to go into the world and preach the gospel of every creature, to preach the loss. For how should they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how should they hear except there be a preacher? Not only does the Lord care so much so for the lost that he sends us forth to preach the gospel of them. He cares for the poor. He cares so much so for the poor that when we feed the hungry, it is if we have fed Christ himself. When we give drink to the thirsty, it is if we gave to Christ himself. When we clothe the naked or visit the sick in the hospital or those in prison, it is if we have done unto the Lord himself and he shall reward us in his kingdom and say unto us, if we remember the poor, as the apostles left us an example, come ye, blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared from you from the foundation of the world. The Lord cares for the poor. And the apostles of Christ, who left us an example in the Holy Scriptures, not only did they give each other the right hands of fellowship in the preaching the gospel, they fellowshiped in remembering the poor, persuading one another to remember the poor. And what if a professing Christian who calls Jesus Christ Lord does not do so? What if a professing Christian says, No, I'm saved by grace through faith, though the Bible says faith without works is dead. But they may say, No, I am saved by grace through faith. I don't have to do a thing. It is easy believism. As long as I believe in Jesus, as long as I pray a certain prayer, as long as I call him Lord, I'm going to go to heaven. Jesus Christ says in verse 41 of Matthew chapter 25, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, in whom the Lord calls goats, Depart from me, Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Why, verse 42? Because they didn't go to church. No, Christ does not say so. 
Why in verse 42? Because they're going to keep the Sabbath day holy. No, Christ does not say so. Why in verse 42? Because they didn't pray a certain prayer at the altar. No, Christ does not say so. Why would he say unto these whom he calls goats, depart from me, cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, which is hell? For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visit me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, these whom Christ calls goats, these whom Christ will say, Depart from me, ye cursed, and to everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels, these same ones, they call Jesus Lord. They profess him as their Lord. Are you a professing Christian? Do you call Jesus Lord? And when you stand before the Lord in judgment, for the Bible says we shall all appear in the judgment of Christ. When you stand before the Lord in the judgment, will he say these words to you? And will you call him Lord? Will you say to him, Lord, I thought it was easy believism. Lord, I thought I prayed a prayer I was safe. Lord, I thought I was once saved, always saved. I thought I didn't have to do a thing for my grace and my saved through faith. Though faith without works is dead. These will say to the Lord, Lord, when saw we the unhungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did I minister unto me and to thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I sent you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the, the least of these, ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, the righteous and to life eternal. The Lord cares so much so for the poor, that those who remember the poor, as the apostles did in the New Testament, leaving us an example to follow that those that remember the poor who call Jesus Lord and remember the poor that they'll receive as Christ says life eternal but those though they may call Christ Lord and do not remember the poor do not feed the hungry do not give drink to the thirsty do not clothe the naked or visit those in the hospital, those that are sick or those in prison. Christ says, these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Christ cares for the poor. And the apostles of Christ, whether it be James, Peter, or otherwise known as Cephas, or John, who went forth to the circumcision to preach the gospel of them, or Paul and Barnabas, who went forth to the heathen to preach the gospel of them and gave each other right hands of fellowship. They commanded one another to remember the poor. Christ cares for the poor. So much so, the Lord Jesus Christ says in Luke chapter 4, in the book of Luke, Chapter 4, the Lord Jesus Christ says in verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Are you a professing Christian? And is the same Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, upon you as well? How should we know? Christ says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. If a person is not preaching the gospel to the poor and to preach the gospel to the poor, you must go to them. If a person is not going to the poor to preach the gospel to them, they do not have the spirit of the Lord upon them. How many today Ministers who are hirelings, 
who make a profession out of the ministry faithfully minister to the rich. Those that faithfully give to church buildings and church organizations and like puppets, they preach whatever the rich want to hear because they're hirelings. They serve not God, but mammon. They have not the spirit of God for they do not go to the poor. Instead, they focus on preaching to the rich and in pleasing the rich. Here in this country that I'm currently in of Thailand, over 99% of the population does not profess Jesus as Lord. And most of the population here are in poverty. I believe the number is over 90% of the population here in this country are in poverty. However, professing Christians, hired ministers, missionaries who are sent from overseas, they do not go to the poor. They do not go to the lost. They go to fancy church buildings that are provided by the rich who are in power as they are the ones who provide for these church buildings and they minister to the rich and preach to the rich and preach to please the rich and never go into the world where the lost are or where the poor are to preach the gospel to them. Jesus Christ says, and we follow the Lord Jesus Christ as he is our glorious head. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because you've anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Christ cares so much for the poor that when he was on this earth and when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Christ cares so much for the poor that when he was on this earth, that's who he preached to. He preached to the poor. From the book of James, it is written in the epistle of the apostle James. James chapter two, verse five, it is written, hearken my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which hath promised to them that love him. God hath chosen the poor. The Lord cares for the poor. And God hath chosen the poor rich in faith. God hath chosen the poor rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. Who has God chosen? The poor of this world. Who does the Lord care for? The poor of this world. And when the apostles walked this earth and left us an example in the New Testament, not only did they go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and gave each other right hands of fellowship in doing so, they also remembered the poor for the Lord cares for the poor the Lord Jesus Christ gave us a clear description of hell in the gospel of Luke he tells us what hell is like and gives us a very clear description of hell beginning in verse 19 of chapter 16 in the gospel of Luke and it is written, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table wherever the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he, the rich man, he 
that fared sumptuously every day. He that was clothed in purple and fine linen, and in hell he lift up his eyes with in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime refused to pray the sinner's prayer. No, that's not what Abraham said. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Abraham is the father of faith. Abraham called this rich man son. Abraham, the father of faith, calling this rich man a son, meant this man professed to believe, had faith in God, but he ended up in hell. And why would this man, whom the father of faith, Abraham, who called son, end up in hell for? Because he refused to feed the poor. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Why? Because he was rich, and Lazarus was poor. Why? Because the rich man in his riches refused to take care of the poor, and using his riches for his own comfort, and ignored the beggar sitting at his gates. And Christ would say to every professing Christian who ignores the beggars sitting at the gate, depart from ye cursed, then to everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. As the apostles commended one another after giving to the right hands of fellowship and the preach of the gospel, remember the poor. We that profess to be Christians who call Jesus Christ Lord, we must remember the poor. For many years, as I've been preaching the gospel in the streets of Bangkok, Thailand, we always remember the poor. Yes, there are many times that I've had to sacrifice, sacrifice my own daily bread, even sacrifice transportation and going back home for preaching the gospel, having to walk over 10 kilometers back to where I currently live, all because we remember the poor. And why would we do such a thing? Because Christ cares for the poor. Yes, there's been many times, even here in this park, the Royal Field or Sanam Long in the Tai Tung. For many years ago, this park used to house all of Bangkok's homeless. And we used to faithfully come and preach the gospel here to them. And not only would we preach the gospel to all the homeless that used to gather here in this park, we used to bless them as well. And there's been many times I've had to walk back where I currently live from this very park because we remember the poor. And why do we do so? Because Christ cares for the poor. And I love the Lord, therefore I love whom the Lord cares for. I love the Lord, therefore I care who the Lord cares for. And he cares for the poor. Just as the Lord is concerned and moved with compassion for the lost, he is also concerned and moved with compassion for the poor, for the hungry who are crying out, Give us this day our daily bread and sleep in hungry. The Lord cares for them. And he blesses us that we in turn may bless them. We do our alms in secret. You'll not see us take care of the poor on video camera or even in our still pictures if you're on social media. For we do our alms in secret. But we always remember the poor. Back in 2007, as I was preaching the gospel in the Middle East Street, a poor Persian man here in Bangkok, Thailand, homeless, upset, and mad at me preaching the gospel, came up to me and struck me this fist right into my solar plexus. 
I continued to preach the gospel. This greatly angered this man. He was Persian. He was an Iranian, a homeless man here in Bangkok, Thailand. And he was upset and enraged at me for preaching the gospel. And he struck me again. I continued to preach the gospel. And when I finished preaching the gospel for the night, I asked that man what he wanted to eat. And he dragged me over to where they were selling some barbecued fish. And he demanded me to buy him a whole fish, which I in turn did though it was a sacrifice on my part. But we blessed him. And after that, every time he saw me, he continued to punch me. He continued to demand me to buy him food. And we continued to do so since 2007. Nine years later, in 2016, just last week, as I was preaching the gospel there in the Middle East Street, that same aforementioned Persian man clothed in Mohammedan guard and a Mohammedan robe and a Mohammedan hat. As he witnessed me preaching the gospel, he walked straight to me, but instead of punching me in the solar plexus, he gave me a hug. And then he put into my hand a bill, a thousand baht bill, which is about 30 US dollars, give or take a few dollars, and put that into my hand and gave me a hug and walked away. You see, he never forgot all the times that we blessed him. Though he would strike me, he would physically attack me, we would still bless him as we continue to preach the gospel following the apostles' doctrines who gave each other the right hands of fellowship in the ministry of the gospel and also in remembering the poor. And when we do so, our labor is not in vain. For God hath chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath prepared for them that love him. Remember the poor. The Lord cares for the poor. And it's our service to the poor that will determine we that profess to be Christians, we that profess Jesus Christ as Lord, it will determine if we spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell, if what we do to the poor. Remember the poor, for the Lord cares for the poor as much as he cares for the lost. And once again, in the book of Galatians, chapter 2. In the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 9 and verse 10, that is written, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto their circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Remember the poor. Not only do we go to the lost to preach the gospel of them, we also go to the poor as well. Where will you spend eternity when you die? Do you have faith in God? For faith without works is dead. Show me thy faith without works, and I'll show thee my faith by my works. Do you truly believe in Jesus Christ? Are you a doer of God's word, or do you deceive yourselves and are only a hearer? Do you go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Do you have the right hands of fellowship with those that do so? And do you Remember the poor. Christ is going to separate professing Christians on this right hand that's left. He's going to call those on the right hand as sheep and those on the left goats. And the sheep will go into the kingdom which the Father prepared for them. And the goats will go into everlasting fire. All depending on what they did to the poor on this earth. Where will you spend eternity when you die? God bless you. We're praying for you. 
pray for you to truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and faith without works is dead. Praying that you would truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have believed in him so much so you have works to back it up. Praying that you truly be saved and that you would not only preach the gospel of the lost, but also to remember the poor. God bless you. We're praying for you.